These are this afternoon's top stories. CARICOM Youth Ambassadors Settling into Wolves, U.S. Virgin Islands Cracking Down on Delinquent Child Support, and U.S. Joins Fight to Retake Fallen Afghan City. Good afternoon and welcome to the ZIZ Midday Newscast. Today is Wednesday, 30th September 2015. I'm Carla Berridge. In national news, Dennis McCall Jr. and Joy Napier have been appointed as the new CARICOM Youth Ambassadors, CYA. They now assume responsibility for advocating CARICOM matters locally while promoting the perspectives of young people at the CARICOM level. The ambassadors are being supported by Travis Bell and Merville Nisbet, who will serve as alternates. McCall will also serve as the dean of the CYA Corps, assuming the post from Haiti's ambassador. The quartet was reportedly chosen after an extensive call for persons to apply across the Federation. The ambassadors began their official duties earlier this month during the Independence 32 celebrations. The Department of Youth Empowerment has encouraged persons to become acquainted with the CARICOM Youth Ambassadors. St. Kitts and Nevis has the largest contingent of University of the Virgin Islands alumni in the Eastern Caribbean, and the local alumni association is taking its role seriously. This morning, ZIZ News caught up with Sinclair Hodge, who is the association's president. Hodge spoke of an initiative dubbed First to 50 Challenge, which calls for at least 50% of the university's alumni body to donate to their alma mater. Here we have tag teamed with the University of the Virgin Islands. Um, this is the final year by which we can achieve 50% or more contribution by the alumni members. And what this does for the university is solidify our position as the first and only historically black university to do something of this magnitude. Um, this is significant because universities are basically judged on the strength of their alumni. Hodge said telecommunications company Lime is helping the association with its drive. So far, we have gotten a corporate partner on board, um, Lime, Anthony Morton, and his marketing team. They've come on board. They've assisted us in uh, getting the message out. Um, we've gotten some mobile phones from them, and we're making some calls. Um, we're still actually making some calls throughout the day, as today, um, September 30th, is the deadline. And they have been very gracious to us. They've supported us and they've encouraged us in this initiative. So they've been with us every step of the way. And it's going well so far and we're continuing today. That was president of the UVI St. Kitts Nevis Alumni Association, St. Clair Hodge. Pastor Jeremy Thomas and his congregation at the Christian Life Assembly are making plans for two nights of special services under the theme Grace for Grace. On Tuesday, Pastor Thomas told our reporter that it is always important to have a time for impartation. The services that we're having this weekend, which is October the 2nd, starting Friday this weekend, we're having, a, a, well, as you said, a special service um, where we're inviting my um, my spiritual father um, from Antigua, Apostle Cedric Forbes, and the special service pretty much entails uh, an impartation. And for this week, we just want to be be able to, as a church, impart into the lives of of every kitchen or even any vision. Just want you to come on out on on the the second of October and the fourth of 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 October as well, which is a Sunday night, to be in part to have a a, a time of impartation, a time of of healing, restoration, and to even see miracles, signs, and wonders happening on that night. So I'm really, really hoping, you know, to some extent, that um, everybody could come out and be a part of these services. Pastor Thomas, who is new to St. Kitts and Nevis, said he's excited about the upcoming services. He said the general public can also look forward to more special services from the Christian Life Assembly. Yes, this is the first time we're doing something like this, and definitely I could assure you that we will be doing more activities or special services like this in the future. As this may be the first first one, it's just like the, as should I say, the icing on the cake or maybe just the foundation for what's, what's ahead to come. So people should expect more. That was Pastor at the Christian Life Assembly, Jeremy Thomas. On to regional news. On Monday, the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards held an SBA or school-based assessment day for secondary school students to help them develop an appreciation for quality and standards while receiving academic assistance. It is part of the Bureau's activities to mark World Standards Day 2015 on October 14th. DBS's Don Nicholas reports. 
The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards is working with secondary school students on the island over the next two weeks to impress upon them the importance of ensuring that their school-based assessments are up to standard. It's part of activities leading up to World Standards Day. In recent years, standardization has been incorporated into the school curriculum. We decided to have a press launch to let the public know what is planned by the Bureau for the month of October in celebration of World Standards Day. The theme this year is standards, the common language. It is important to note that in our day-to-day -day life, even if we don't recognize it, standards are really what makes everything go round. Um, the use of your ATM card, the use of the internet, the use of your vehicles, are all through the use of standards and implementation of standards. We're also looking at the introduction of standardization in the school curriculum. We've been doing so for a few years, ensuring that the students understand the importance of standards. And to do this this year, we've invited a number of students to come into the Bureau today to see how they can introduce standardization in their school-based assessment. The Bureau of Standards says the response by the students was so overwhelming that the number of students participating in the project was doubled from 20 to 40. Commerce Minister Emma Hippolyte, who attended the function, is happy about the project. As she put it, what better place to start emphasizing the importance of standards than in the schools? So today I am extremely happy that we are there for two reasons. Um, this morning as well, for the first time we have what we call SBD, S, SBA Day, where the, the, the staff of the bureau, the technical staff, would be working with students to help them with the SBA. And I see this as a significant step for us because we are now investing in the future. Because you know the challenge we have as Ministry of Commerce and as um, the Bureau of Standards to encourage business persons to embrace standards. If we start a lot earlier, if our young persons who are the business people of tomorrow understand the importance of standard very early, then our work becomes a lot easier. World Standards Day will be commemorated on October 14th. For the DBS News World, I am Don Nicholas. The Justice Department in the U.S. Virgin Islands is cracking down on child support. Parents who owe more than $2,500 in child support and are delinquent for more than 30 days are in the crosshairs of the Department of Justice and may face serious sanctions because of the delinquent payments. CBS News 2's April Knight has that story. The VI Department of Justice is no longer playing with parents who failed to pay child support. Attorney General Claude Walker made the announcement in a press conference Monday. An important initiative uh, entitled Operation Support Our Children. This is shameful conduct that has to stop. Quite frankly, we can say it's downright un-American for someone to have a child and have the means to take care of that child but refuses to do so. According to Walker, there are more than 1,700 Virgin Islands parents who currently owe a combined amount of more than $29 million in overdue child support payments. 99% of these parents are men. And for all of these cases, according to Walker, the paternity have been firmly established. Last week, child support officials testified before the Senate that they signed up for the federal parent locator program so taxpayers don't end up picking up the slack and the VI doesn't lose any more incentive federal funding. It ends today. Walker says they're ready to impose sanctions on delinquent parents. The Attorney General's office is authorized to suspend any license for any person, any parent who owes $2,500 or more. We can suspend professional licenses, driver's licenses, business licenses, have his passport withdrawn. That person will not be able to travel overseas if the passport is withdrawn. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. Internationally, U.S. aircrafts are supporting Afghan troops who are fighting to retake a key city that has fallen to Taliban rebels. CNN's Barbara Starr reports. Afghan forces in all-out combat against the Taliban in Kunduz in northern Afghanistan. 
trying to retake the city from Taliban fighters in their biggest victory since they were driven from power in 2001. Police and security forces on guard. Obviously, this is a, a setback for the Afghan security forces, um, but we've seen them respond uh, in recent weeks and months uh, to the challenges they faced. Afghan forces were surprised by the Taliban attack, according to a senior U.S. official. When the Taliban grabbed control of a battle tank and threatened Afghan and coalition troops, a U.S. aircraft rolled in and dropped a bomb. The coalition issuing a statement saying it was to protect coalition troops in danger of attack. We've seen U.S. aircraft supporting uh, the Afghan government and the Afghan security forces because they can't do it alone just yet. You're also going to see U.S. special forces, uh, special operating forces, uh, supporting the, uh, the commandos in Afghanistan as they attempt to reinforce Kunduz. U.S. and German forces regularly operate in the area, advising Afghan troops. They remain there now. The fighting is very tough. The Taliban freed jailed prisoners and took over a hospital. Taliban fighters are digging in by taking positions in civilian buildings. The Taliban offensive comes as a new report from the House Homeland Security Committee warns of another threat, the growing ISIS presence in Afghanistan. The report notes ISIS is reported to have amassed hundreds, if not thousands, of fighters in the country already. That's certainly something we've been keeping an, an eye on. Um, but we have concerns about any terrorist group uh, making safe haven in, in Afghanistan. On Tuesday, Republicans in the United States accused Planned Parenthood President Cecile Richards of spending 40 million U.S. dollars on lavish priorities during a heated and emotional congressional hearing on the embattled organization. Planned Parenthood is a non-profit organization that provides reproductive health as well as maternal and child health services, and it came under fire after the release of a secretly filmed video of one of its executives discussing the sale of fetal organs. The head of Planned Parenthood, now target number one for Republicans, endured a five-hour interrogation today on Capitol Hill. Do you profit or make money on abortion services? There's potentially four federal crimes, and all I'm asking is, has the Justice Department contacted you? Republicans want to cut off all government funding of Planned Parenthood in the wake of a series of controversial undercover videos this summer from anti-abortion activists. Those videos claim to show Planned Parenthood officials discussing the sale of aborted fetal tissue. Today, Planned Parenthood President Cecile Richards called claims the group sells fetal tissue false. The outrageous accusations leveled against Planned Parenthood based on heavily doctored videos are offensive and categorically untrue. The Republican campaign against Planned Parenthood hit an emotional high point with Carly Fiorina in the last Republican debate. To watch these tapes, watch a fully formed fetus on the table, its heart beating, its legs kicking. While someone says we have to keep it alive to harvest its brain. This is about the character of our nation. Planned Parenthood has accused Fiorina of lying about the video. The anti-abortion group video does include a scene like Fiorina described, although the audio is edited from a different event. And today the group that made the video would not tell ABC News whether the fetus shown was actually from a Planned Parenthood facility. As for Planned Parenthood's funding, it receives $528 million annually in government money, which supports services like cancer screenings, treatment of STDs, and birth control. The group also performs abortions, but by law, none of the federal money it receives can go to abortion. Take a look at the weather. Temperatures will peak today at 81 degrees Fahrenheit and winds are from the south-southeast at 3 to 9 miles per hour, being variable or calm at times. Seas are moderate to locally rough with swells up to 6 feet. Therefore, small craft operators and sea bathers should continue to exercise caution. In the weather summary today, will remain partially sunny with very warm conditions in general. There is a good chance of localized afternoon shower developing. Sunrise for tomorrow is expected at 6.01 a.m., while sunset today should be at 6.01 p.m.
And that brings us to the end of the ZIZ Midday Newscast. Join us this evening for these stories and more in detail. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kyla Verge.